Hello, my name is Darkmoon Doll, better known as Trina. Um, <clears throat> recently I put up a video for my Patreon and I received a Patreon last night, <laughs> which I noticed this morning. So I want to say thank you to the person that uh, made the pledge of $5. Her name is Lady of Fire Poetry. Thank you so much. She's been a very big supporter of my channel and of my art, and I really, truly appreciate it. So to show my appreciation, I'm going to show you a tutorial on how I make these simple uh, little people to put on keychains, sculpting with polymer clay. Um, you can make any kind of people. You can make little witches, you can make little African shaman dolls, you can make, but they're all going to be little size because I'm going to put them in the toaster oven to uh, bake them. So it's not like I have a kiln or anything. And when I get it, use a toaster oven, it's an oven designated just for baking clay. So <laughs> it's not like I'm using it for dual purposes for cooking food and clay, <laughs> but not, which not would not be a good idea. <laughs> So let me show you the clay that I'm working with today. Yes. I bought this clay uh, some time ago, but I just never uh, had the time to sit down and work with it. Um, it's called Sculpey 3. I usually buy Sculpey 3. Um, it's really affordable, and you get a lot in there. So you get like um, 31 ounce bars. And uh, I like to mix the colors, and then that way, I don't know, for some reason it seems it makes it last longer when you use more than one color. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to open this up, <laughs> and we're going to get to sculpting. Um, you can use other kinds of clay, just as long as it's oven safe. Um, some clays aren't oven, oven bake and clay safe. See, it'll say on top of the packaging when you go to your craft store. Or if you look at the description, if you're purchasing it on Amazon or eBay, it'll show you. So make sure you get that. Um, what's saying that you need to um, cook it at 275 degrees uh, for 15 minutes. With my toaster oven, I do it even lower so it doesn't burn. Because it's an old toaster oven, I get to get a new one just for this purpose. <laughs> so let's get these clays out of here. You know, the way that I pick, pick uh, colors <laughs> when I'm uh, creating is just by instinct. So I've got all of these colors, and I'm going to pick um, three colors. <laughs> so the colors that are speaking to me today are blue, um, fluorescent pink, um, let's see, purple. Um, I did say three colors. I think I'm going to do one more. I did two. One more color. And that will be maybe something bright, like a yellow or an orange. I'm going to do a yellow. So that's going to be interesting. <laughs> um, I like to have fun with clay. Um, a lot of times I don't think about what it is I'm going to create before I create it. This time I did because I'm doing this specifically for um, a patron and a friend. You know, really really nice person. She has some really good poetry and she also has a Patreon too. So you can look her up under Lady of Fire, Lady of Fire Poetry on Patreon as well. And you can uh, pledge to her. So I just took the, I just took it out of the, out of the wrapper. And um, I'm just going to take a piece off. And this clay gets really soft. So I roll it in my hands because I'm going to make a head. Um, the thicker you make it, the longer it'll take to uh, bake in the oven, just so I'll let you know. So when I finish these uh, these little charms, uh, I'm going to send, it's going to be a giveaway. So if you, if you come to my Patreon and become a patron, I will give you, um, I'll do a tutorial like this and give you a free gift. Um, what you have to do is um, send me your email address with your address and I'll mail you a free gift <laughs> from the tutorials that I do. So I thought that would be cool. And plus I have a lot of, uh, you know, extra art that I'd love to just donate. So I got a ball for a head. I think I'm just gonna make it a blue person. <laughs> so I'm gonna make the body small. So I'm just doing this cylindrical thing and then it's just kind of instinctual and it's relaxing. You're just molding the clay and just kind of seeing what's going to come 
what you want to come. So, let's see. So, just put this on top of here for the body. What I want to do is kind of, let's see, do I have my toothpicks? I like to use toothpicks too to sculpt. I don't have a bunch of sculpting, fancy sculpting tools. <clears throat> my basic tools are my hands and, and a toothpick. <laughs> so it works. So what I'm going to do is push down the clay into what's going to be the neck area for the body. So, you know, working with clay, um, you don't have to do it like I'm doing it. You can do your own creative approach to this all. It doesn't have to be like what I'm doing. So now I'm going to make some arms and legs. So for the arms, I'm just going to do like this for a cylindrical type of deal. And then flatten it out on the bottom there. And then just connect it. Oh, this looks more like a leg, huh? So put this on here for a leg. Just think of it like when you were a kid and you used to sculpt with uh, Play-Doh. I remember I used to sculpt with Play-Doh when I was a kid and I wanted the images to last longer. <laughs> but I didn't know anything about polymer clay when I was a kid. Only if I did, my God, I'd have so many sculptures now. <laughs> so I, I suggest that you make the sculptures as thick as you can. That way it's not too fragile. So if you make it thick like that, it'll, um, it won't break easily. I've noticed that when I first started sculpting, I was doing these really intricate sculptures with really skinny and thin pieces on it. <laughs> And then it ended up breaking. <laughs> All that work for not. So I just suggest using really thick applications of is how it is so far. <laughs> it looks cute. So I'm gonna do this here for some arms. And you know it doesn't have to be perfect unless you're going for perfection. There's this really cool sculptor named Jack Johnston, who I found out about through Art Dog Quarterly, which is a really cool magazine. But he sculpts dolls using clay, Palmer clay. And he's just like an expert at it. I mean, as far as realism goes, he even made, I think he even made a doll of himself where it looks so much like him. It was so cool. Uh, but yeah, you don't have to get that fancy. Just have fun with it. You can like express, like, see, I curled the arm, the hand in, like, at that. Just expression. I'm just making it simple yet fun <laughs> so yeah that's this right here um, on the top you're gonna want to put some sort of a hole or something so that you can attach your um, it attach your drop your uh, oh my god I can't think right now <laughs> attach your jump ring <laughs> that's what I was trying to say so I'm putting a hole in the middle of the head. <laughs> it looks kind of weird, but it's going to look right once it's done. But I just need a hole in there so that I can fit <coughs> the, um, like I said, <laughs> the, the attachment so you can put it onto your keychain. So the drop ring. I keep forgetting the name of that part. That's weird. So look at this guy. It doesn't look like, <laughs> or a gal. Look at her so far. <laughs> So, might want to do something with the arm. One of the arms looks cut off. I'm going to do something really wild. I'm going to do different colors on the body. Kind of look at, make it look mosaic a little bit. See, he's just having fun with clay. Just about anybody can do this. I mean, not, well, not everybody, but anybody can play with clay and just have fun with it and mold it see what happens. Sometimes I start off with an idea and it turns into something totally different like this. I mean, <laughs> now he's got a, or she's got a, a purple arm. <laughs> this is kind of cool though. I'm having fun with it. And that's the whole point is to have fun with it. And if you wanted to stop at just this point to make your little people, <clears throat> you could do so. And if you wanted to, you could like color or paint them designs on them after you're done so uh, yeah that's that one <laughs> with the little purple hand on the side um, I'm gonna bring out this purple one I mean this purple block of clay and I'm gonna make another one another person like this
Now, like I said, so these are going to take longer to cook. Like I said, these are going to take longer to cook because um, they are um, they are thick. It's polymer clay and it's thick. So the thinner you make them, the quicker they cook. But when you make things thin, you want to make sure that it's something that, <laughs> like say for instance, if you're making a flat like clay like um, B, then that would work. That'd be fine. It won't break. You know, because it's supposed to be flat. But with these, if you have like little skinny, because one on one of these little people I made, I put little horns on there, but the horns were too skinny, and they weren't thick enough. So, just what I might put on this one is some horns. <laughs> but yeah, it's just having fun with clay, and not getting too serious about it. Here's the head for the purple one. Let's, see. Let's break it up. Yeah, just pretend like you were, you're back as a kid again and just having fun. That's how clay is for me. I just, just like relax with it. <laughs> and being outside in nature working with clay is even more fun. So this is just a basic way that I put like a body together. Two round, two round shapes of clay. And then I like mold it on there, the top on to the bottom part with the cute, with the, um, <laughs> with the toothpick. What is this called again? The toothpick. <laughs> so yeah, this is all truly fun. I love it. Oh my God. The colors too. Um, color therapy does wonders for people, especially if they're recovering from traumatic events in their life, um, past traumas. Working with color is very, very healing. So let's see, I'm gonna put this as legs. And you can make these characters as ridiculous as you want to. They don't have to look perfect. Like I said, <laughs> just have fun. They're starting to look like little alien people. <laughs> Which is okay, I think. <laughs> if you're not into aliens, don't make aliens. <laughs> But yeah, here we go. Give him a little bit of personality. These I keep saying him. Maybe I'm making male ones and not realizing it. <laughs> so that's how that looks so far. These crazy long legs and a short waist. Just kind of like me. I've got long, long legs and a short waist, <laughs> which gives me the appearance of height. So, all right, let's see. Yeah. Now I'm gonna make the arms on this purple guy here. <laughs> It's fun, man. I mean, if more people would take time out and create art, we'd be much peaceful people. This would be a much peaceful world. Definitely. <clears throat> okay, I'm getting the other arm on this little guy. So, let's see. Yeah, I suggest when you're doing this kind of work, if you can, do it outside, because then you have ventilation for when you bake the clay. You don't want those kind of fumes inside of your home, so. I am feeling really relaxed now. It's been a while since I've uh, since I've sculpted with clay for a while. Other than making polymer clay beads, which I make also. But anyway, this is how this little guy is looking. <laughs> He's cute. I might want to add, I don't know, I'll add something later maybe. I just feel like I just want to make them these colors now that I'm thinking about it and then put designs on them afterwards. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Adinkra these uh, African symbols that are used. It's kind of akin to like uh, runic symbols, how they have all have these uh, meanings to them, these symbols with meanings to them, like one for bravery, one for honor, one for love. But there are these symbols, symbols that they use to represent, you know, love, triumph, perseverance, you know, it's encouraging. So. That's what I think I'm going to put on these little guys, is some runic symbols and uh, maybe adorn them with some uh, really cool beads and stuff. So here we go. That's the second one. So I'm going to put a hole in the middle of the head so that I can put the, uh, the jump ring in there. If you don't make the hole big enough, don't worry about it. There's always a way around that. Uh, you can do something else. Uh, you could even like glue or attach a, uh, a chain around the neck part and then onto the head and then it could be attached. So there's always a way around it with art, pretty much to me. 
So yeah, we've got the hole in the, in, the, in the second body. So now we're on to the third body, which is going to be a pink one. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. And I hope that everybody gets out there and does more art, because it is fun. And even if you don't pledge to my Patreon, I'll still do tutorials, seriously. But um, I just really appreciate uh, Lady of Fire Poetry for donating. I appreciate it because the money will go towards getting a camera, a new camera. And it can also go towards art supplies. So look, I got the head. So I roll it in my palms like that. When you do that too with your hands, you're getting your energy into the clay. And so whatever you create, it's got your own energy. It's, it's what you created. And you give it to somebody, and it's just a wonderful gift. Wonderful homemade gift. So now I'm making the arms like I do, like a cylindrical type shape. And then I flatten them at the bottom a little bit. <clears throat> There's no set technique for, um, for sculpting, unless you want to be like uh, extremely pro. But even that, <coughs> even if you take classes and stuff on how to sculpt, you still have to learn. <coughs> you still have to be creative, not learn how to be creative, you have to be creative. So you can have skills, but when you don't have creativity with it, then it just becomes boring. So, But I think it's good. If you want to take courses to learn how to sculpt, that's cool. Um, do I think it's necessary? No, it's not necessary, but it's something if you want to do it. So I've got the neck part. This is going to be a body part and make it flat. If you want to make it longer, just do like that and then round it up there. <clears throat> a lot of my art is very instinctual, so it's not really... Sometimes it's hard to put it into steps, really, tell you the truth. <laughs> so this is coming along good. I'm going to put the legs on there, on this guy here. <laughs> It's almost like uh, rainbow people. <laughs> Maybe that's what I could call them, rainbow people. Different colors of the rainbow. <coughs> so yeah, look at that. Look at this little guy so far. These are fun, and they can cheer you up too um, if you make little things like this. This is why I like making dolls. <coughs> because um, if you're having a stressful day, you just make a little person with a silly face on it, and it can brighten your day. <laughs> so let's see. Let's get this on here. I just want to make this simple, like I said. Because I'm starting to really feel like I do want to put a deeper symbols all over it. It's like a bird moving around here. <laughs> it's pretty nice out right now. <laughs> so if you create, do you create outside? It's awesome to create outside. So here we go. Let's get you fixed up here. <laughs> you're a little bit skinnier than the rest, but you're still okay. <laughs> it is kind of looking alienish <laughs> or tribal, whatever you want to. We'll find out when it's done. <laughs> so there we go. It's got that one. Let's smooth them out a little bit. You can always smooth out the rough edges after it bakes too, when you're done. So it's almost like gingerbread man style. <laughs> so. If you want things to be more sculptural, you, there's other techniques you can do. Like, I'll show you that too once we, I can, once I continue with these sculpting videos, the sculpting series. <coughs> I'll share with you some things that I learned on my own, just from trial and error, and I can share with you stuff that uh, stuff that I learned just, you know, from reading, from reading books and stuff, magazines mainly. Uh, a quarterly, the Art Dog Quarterly, really showed me how to do basic stuff. So yeah, there's all kinds of clay you can mess with too, polymer clay, paper clay, so yeah. So here's the three little guys that I made, and then the holes there, you could just put your jump rings in there, and then um, bake them. So I'm going to bake them, and I'll be right back. So now what I'm going to do is put the little guys into the toaster oven to bake. Um, <clears throat> I usually just keep track of it, but this toaster oven, if you don't keep track of it, it might like smoke up or something. So you leave it outside um, and I just watch it. I stay right here. So usually it takes about uh, probably less than 10 minutes for it to bake. If it's thicker, it's going to take longer for it to bake. So let me show you what they look like here. These are the little guys we're going to put in there. 
you put it onto a tray that has foil on it, a baking tray, so that it doesn't, uh, I don't know, just so it'll be okay. <laughs> put that there, and then put this one there. So there we go. We've got three little guys. I didn't use the yellow yet, so we'll wait on the yellow. But I'm going to put these guys in there. Uh, let's see. So we're going to turn these on to bake and let's see what we got. I usually put them on a low setting at like 150, which is at 150 here. Um, that way it doesn't burn. So turn on the timer. I'm going to start it off at five minutes and then see what happens. So yeah, in the meantime, um, I might just make another one of those little people. So let's get and go over to my chair. <laughs> and yeah, we'll show you that. Be right back. A little back. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make the, I guess the fourth one. <laughs> it seems like it was missing. Like you need a yellow one to finish the uh, rainbow, rainbow people. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do basically the same uh, the same technique, but I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna mix that leftover pink that I had from the little pink guy in with the yellow one. And watch what happens when you mix the colors. So I'm gonna put that pink on top of the yellow, put it in my hand, mix it up, and then spread it out like this. It kind of reminds me of that banana, strawberry, bubble, delicious gum back in the 80s. <laughs> Those colors, it kind of, some of that gum, it kind of seems like a consistency <laughs> of clay. <laughs> so yeah, look at how it's looking so far. This is going to get psychedelic now, man. This is what you do to make it psychedelic. You mix the colors. <clears throat> and that's what I do with a lot of my beads. So this will be fun to do an actual little person, a little psychedelic person, for a keychain. See, look at that. If you want to mix the colors even more, you can spread it out and then bring it over and just do even more. If you do it too much, you might lose the patterns in it. But what you do is just add more different colored clay to it. <laughs> Pretty easy. Yeah. So yeah, just put that on the top there. See how that's on top. And then I want to bring it around like that. And then roll it up. Roll it up, roll it up, roll it up, roll it up with my hands. <laughs> See, it's so much fun. Art is fun. <laughs> so yeah, I got that part. And I'm going to do the body for the, for the head. I'm just gonna roll it up in a ball in my palms. I love the feeling of the clay rolling in my palms, my hands, and kneading it. It's kind of similar to when you um, when you bake bread. So let me grab my toothpick so that I can put this head onto the neck. <laughs> this is quite fun. <laughs> it always has been from the moment I started sculpting with clay. I'm not some like professional sculptor, but <laughs> I have fun, you know? And that's the whole point of me showing you this is to have fun. So, here we go. Now, elongate the body a little bit, maybe, if you want to, you know? And then you're going to incorporate this pink, a little bit of pink in with the arms and legs. So let's see what this will be, if this will be an arm or a leg. So, sometimes it's easier with tutorials for me to just watch it happen. And sometimes when people explain it, it's easier just to see it, not just to see it written. Actually see someone doing it. It makes more sense, I think. So, and the, oh, shit. Oh, no. We got some. show you what happened. It's smoking up a little bit. See that smoking up? So let me come let me come back to you and show you what happened. So hello, this is what happened to the <laughs> polymer clay little people in the oven. They got a bit scorched, but they're okay. <laughs> See it's pretty solid. They're cooling off right now. I think I put it up too high for the temperature. I think that's what happened. And plus this is an old toaster oven. So it's kind of unpredictable of the heat. Um, I think next time we'll put it at like 120 maybe. That way it doesn't, you know, overheat itself. We put it at like right, right here. 
maybe about there, 120 there. So then the next one I made, but these are okay. They're, they're done actually. <laughs> they're nice and done. Um, they just need to dry. And then after they dry, I'll add the the extra things onto it that they need. So yeah, just make sure <laughs> you don't put it up too high because that's what happens. Make sure the back of them, the little scorched on the back, which is okay. And we'll just uh, see that's the back of them. So in the back of them, we'll probably put uh, a little nice message on the back with uh, paint. I got some oil paints recently. So that's what I'm probably going to use for the adinkra symbols that I said I'm going to put on there. And I'm going to do that little yellow one. It's coming along. See that? The, the psychedelic one. That's going to be coming up next. So yeah. Um, <laughs> Sometimes there's happy little accidents. This looks kind of cool how it's scorched like that. I kind of like that. I'm not saying to burn your house down or anything when you're baking these. <laughs> Bake it outside in a toaster oven that's designated just for polymer clay. That's really important. And let them cool off thoroughly before you start to paint them and decorate them. And um, when you come back, when we come back, I'll show you how to decorate them and put the um, drop drop rings. I keep calling them drop rings. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And the keychain uh, onto it. So you have a cool little groovy um, Adinkra symbol, little gu little guys to put on your keychain. So, Or you can even put it over your altar or whatever. <clears throat> it's up to you. Some people have used uh, the keychain little people I make for like their altar. So, Or as a um, what was this one woman said? She used it as a um, as a totem. So, okay. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, I'll be back with you guys and show you how I decorate these little guys, including the psychedelic one. And I'll see you soon. Peace. Da -da -da. Little rainbow people. Okay, so I'm finishing up that little uh, psychedelic rainbow person. I just thought it'd be cool for you to see what it looks like when I work on it. So I made the, uh, it's gonna be their arm or legs. I made them squirrely by mixing both the pink and the yellow together. So, yeah. And this looks kind of cool. Looks like kind of like a pair of pants or something. <laughs> Pair of psychedelic pants. You guys ever wear those leggings back in the 80s? All this stuff from the 80s is coming back in style, I swear to God. If you look at these places like Target, uh, they've got all these uh, supposedly 80, or 80s and actually 70s too, style. Just mixing everything up. So this is how this little guy looks so far. <laughs> little circus guy. <laughs> psychedelic circus guy. <laughs> So I did like that. I mixed these two colors together. Now what I'm going to do is something fun. Just swirl it around like that. And then crumple it up in my palms and then roll it like that. <laughs> I never really broke it down like that. <laughs> let's do that in slow-mo. <laughs> so let's see. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. This is going to be for the arms. <laughs> Slippery. Okay. Let's see. I need a little bit more pink here. So, get some pink in there. Isn't the sound of the birds so beautiful and peaceful? Oh my god. Nature is the best music ever. So, look at what I did with that. Just put it over and roll it up in my palm. This is my favorite thing to do with the clay, is just roll it in my palm. <laughs> so, okay like that. And then I'm going to cut it in two pieces for the arms, both arms. So, by the time I'm done with this, probably the other pieces are probably cooled off by, now, by then. So, I'm going to make the arms go out like that. So, like that there. It's looking cool. So far, so good. This is something that just about anybody can do. Um, kids can do it too with parent parental supervision uh -huh. because you're working with a, a oven and stuff. Especially if an oven smokes up like mine just did. <laughs> it's okay though, everything's fine. There's no fire or anything. We're okay. <laughs> We're all right. So I'm going to give 
from that other arm. See that? Psychedelic arms. This part's kind of blank, so I'm gonna gonna twist it over so that each part of the arm will have some sort of pattern, cool pattern on it. Hopefully. <laughs> kind of. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so I'm gonna add the other arm on. See, and this kind of work kind of teaches you to be creative. If people think they're not creative, I think that's not true. You just have to take the time out and let yourself, allow yourself the time to be creative. So there you go. There's a fourth one. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is put a hole in this one's head too. Right in this, kind of in the center. A hole big enough to where um, <coughs> a drum ring can fit in there or uh, like <coughs> a chain and then you attach a drum ring on it. <coughs> because the head's really thick and it's not flat so it's going to be probably harder to get a jump ring through the thickness of a head. So you can use um, a chain, go through it, and attach a dump, jump ring on it, and attach the jump ring onto the keychain. So there we go. There you go. So I'm going to put this guy in the oven, <coughs> and then I'll come back and show you how I uh, did put the designs onto the other dolls. And I'll show you the exact decor symbols and everything that I use for it. So yeah. stay tuned for that. So hello, I hope you can see me really well. I'm underneath the almond tree, <laughs> away from the porch. Now that we've got these all cooked up, this is what they look like dried, and uh, they're all cooked and finished. There's the pink one. <laughs> there's the purple one. <laughs> and here's the psychedelic one. And they all have a little bit of the singeing burntness on it because it smoked up a little bit. But you see how they've they've. Uh, They've cooled off solid, and they're pretty steady. So, <clears throat> and I also made a little tiny one too, like a baby one. <laughs> so, what I'm gonna do next is show you how to put the adinker signs on there with acrylic paint, which is um, fairly simple. Uh-oh, one of them lost an arm. We'll have to glue the arm back on, no big deal. But um, that's why you wanna make sure after you paint it, to seal it with Mod Podge, like at least four times, uh, let it dry in between coats. That way, if this happens, <laughs> you just glue it back on. It's not a big deal. It's not a big fatality. Just glue it right back on. So we'll do that after I put the designs on it. So um, I think I'm going to start with this one, and I'll show you the Adinkra sign symbols that I have. So take it out of this plastic bag. A friend of mine told me about the Adinkra symbols and said that I might want to incorporate it into my art. Um, each symbol has a, a meaning to it. So yeah, I'll show you the Adinkra symbols. Um, you can also look this up online too and get a copy of it like I did. This is just all I did was just copied it. But there's each symbol means something. Just like in every culture, there are specific symbols that have meaning to them, that are meaningful to the people, to the culture, the tribe that's there. So that is what this is about so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick these willy-nilly I'm gonna pick the heart for patience uh, and this is the heart of course for patience I'm gonna do that for the um, <laughs> I think I want to do it for this one <laughs> so I've got some three different colors of acrylic paints these are the only acrylic paints I have available right now <laughs> I'm running out um, I did just get some oil paints, but I'm not sure how long that'll take for the oil paints to dry. So acrylic paints dry a lot faster. So if you want to create something with a lot much speed, you can use acrylic paints. So I'm going to use, I'm going to start with blue because blue will really pop on this. So I'm just going to put a heart on there. Okay, I'll show it to you um, as I'm finishing it. Yeah, it's nice to create art. It gets you more in touch with your primal nature. Um, before we even had television, we created art, you know. And we shared it with our, um, with our tribe. And then as we're doing art, we start to learn more about ourselves. 
and why we're feeling the way we are, why we do the things that we do, and why we face the type of uh, struggles that we do every day. With art, for me, it gives me a chance to slow down and really think about these things. This is a fast-paced world that we're living in, but we don't have to be entirely fast-paced ourselves just because the world is acting like that. <laughs> So here we go. This is almost got the heart on there. I like to do, I've not been learning that on smaller pieces, I try not to do too much detail because if you try to do too much detail, it'll turn out a little wonky. Here's a heart on this side. Um, I might want to put some hearts on his, uh, on his sleeve. <laughs> so I'm gonna put one heart on his arm, on each arm, maybe one heart on each uh, leg, so. Creating art is, uh, it's not hard to do, it isn't. It's not hard to do when you feel good doing it. <laughs> I know you guys feel that way. <laughs> but yeah, this is coming along good. And I'm trying to, kind of thinking that I want to add uh, rhinestones to it, which I have. What I'm going to have to do is let this dry overnight. And um, if I'm going to put the rhinestones on it, so, see how that looks on this side. But I feel like I figured it'd look good with the hearts being outlined in rhinestones. That just idea just came to me. <laughs> ideas come to me when I'm creating art um, all the time. And uh, sometimes the ideas can come so fast, it's hard to implement them, you know, soon enough. So, let's see. It's coming along. Don't need much on there. I'm using a toothpick, by the way, to apply it. Um, I could use a fine, you know, fine point um, paintbrush, but I don't have one available. Even sometimes with the fine point paintbrushes, it cannot, sometimes they're not fine enough to get the, the smallest of details that I want to get on here. So yeah, so there's the hearts on these arms. And let's get it on the legs. So, yeah. Creating out in, in nature is so wonderful. You hear all the natural environmental sounds, the birds chirping. You can hear a little bit of rustling of the wind if it's a windy day. Today isn't extremely windy, so it's a slight bit of wind, but nothing intolerable. Yeah, I've always liked creating art ever since I was a little kid. Art really helped me to express things that I couldn't express normally. Um, and it helped me to heal from a lot of past traumas that I experienced in my life. Um, it's helped a lot of people through some really hard times art has. And um, that's why people keep coming back to it. I find a lot of healing in color therapy, for real. I mean, because there's certain colors that that resonate with you, that works well with you, that makes you feel good, you know? That brightens your day, makes you feel like um, you're energized or comforted. So yeah, that's what the two legs and arms look like in the heart. On the back side, I'm gonna do the same thing. I think I might just put some hearts on, on the face too. Why the heck not? Or I could make this hole into like a heart. <laughs> So let's put a, you know what, I'm just gonna, that's what I'll do. I'll make the hole into kind of like a heart. So, I painted up on the top there. Yeah. First I thought it would be hard to do tutorials. I've done tutorials before, but way back when, when I first started doing them, I thought it would be hard because um, I watched this one guy, Redbeard, who does really beautiful glass pieces, and I was like, wow, I love his style of um, tutorials. It's just pretty loose, and um, it's like a, it's a live stream, and I'd love to do that one of these days. I just don't know how to use the live stream mechanisms and things. <laughs> I'm getting there, man. I'm getting there. But this is what it looks like so far. So I'm going to let that dry. And then we're gonna uh, do the other side. So you can do both sides. So let me figure out which color I'm gonna 
put on the other ones. Okay, so this one, because it's a darker color, is blue, I'm going to use a brighter color so it'll pop, so the designs will stand out. Um, on the blue one, let me see which one I'm going to use, which Dinker symbol I'm going to use. Hmm. And this, that's how it is with art. You just kind of have to go with intuition. I'm picking colors and designs, um, what feels right. And I don't want to go too big because um, these are small bodies. I'm going to do the wisdom one on this one, on the blue one. So the blue one, that's the wisdom one right there. If you can see me pointing with my funny nails because I got clay in them. <laughs> but that's the wisdom one right there. So that's the one I'm going to do on the blue little, blue little guy. So here we go. What am I going to use? For, I'm going to use a brighter color. I'm going to use this uh, kind of... I don't think you call it putty, but kind of a, a yellowish, almost mustardy, dark mustardy color, so that it'll stand out. And let me grab the symbol. I don't have all the symbols memorized. I think the more that I do it, the more I will, though. So we're doing wisdom. So wisdom is four circles. So I'm gonna do this carefully. I'll show you after I complete each circle. So, here's one circle. It's kind of like an oval, almost an oval shape. Let's see. And the circles are side by side, so. It won't be perfect, so. <coughs> you just do the best you can, so here we go. Because you're working on a small scale, it's gonna be a little, at least for me, uh, working on a smaller scale artistically is a lot more challenging than on a big scale. On a big scale, you get all the space you need, you know, and you can do as much or carry it over the edge or whatever. <clears throat> but with small, smaller spaces, you are more in control and you've got to stay in a tight space. But I like that um, working with smaller things because it teaches me. Uh, it takes me really more patience, actually. So here we go. <clears throat> so here we go. There's the three circle. I mean, four circles. Now I have to do the little uh, circles on the bottom, on the inside there. So I'm gonna do that. See how that turns out. Don't need much for that. I might just outline this in a darker color too, so it'll pop out even more. So. Yeah, it's fun. I was always fascinated by like the ancient um, statues. So that's what it looks like for now. Um, trying to figure out if I want to put anything else on it right now. I might just put the <coughs> the courage. Should I do courage? Oh, that's my the cat. Um, nah, I don't think I'll do that. What I'll do is. Let's see the other one. So we've got wisdom, and I'm trying to figure out if I want to put anything else on here. <laughs> it's hard to decide. <laughs> okay. So maybe I'll put the man. It's hard to. Maybe the loyalty one. The loyalty one has um, one, two, three, four, five circles. So that's the loyalty one. I'm picking it on simplicity, and I'm also picking it on uh, intuition of which one I think will go good on this. So I'll do the loyalty one. So as wisdom, he'll have wisdom and loyalty. <laughs> so yeah, so let's get a loyalty one here. Four circles, or five circles actually. To one in the center. So, I used to think it would be really easy to make uh, these symbols, but it's not. Um, it's easier to draw a face because <laughs> when I'm get, doing these symbols, I'm trying to get it as accurate as I can. So one circle. So it's got one circle in the middle right there, and then one on the side, on the top, on the right hand side. Okay. 
<clears throat> it doesn't have to be perfect, like I said. Just take your time with it. See? Oh, almost dropped you. <laughs> if you drop it, it's okay. If it lands in the grass, it'll get a little earth on it. Just let it dry. <laughs> and keep going. So I'm going to put one on a circle on the left to connect to the middle circle. It's symmetry, pretty much. I like symmetry in art. When I create art, I try to be symmetrical. Uh, well, I don't try. It ends up happening that way. <laughs> so we got three circles. Just need two more. So then either there's two more on the bottom of the middle circle. So yeah, I like shapes. <laughs> shapes are fun. And this is kind of looking like some sort of. Uh, you know those ancient dolls that people found archaeological digs? <laughs> That's what it's starting to remind me of. I like that though. I've been wanting to do that to burn uh, clay uh, in a kiln. I mean, to bake clay in a kiln, not burn it, and <laughs> bake it in a kiln. So there we go. That's the symbols on that one. So he's got loyalty and wisdom. So I'm going to let him sit down and dry. Acrylic paints take no time to dry. But let them dry really good though. So here's this guy, this spacey looking guy. <laughs> I like the scorch marks on there. I don't know if you guys do, but I like it. It adds character. So, <laughs> all right. So what am I gonna use? What color am I gonna use on you? Hmm. Should I use the green? I think I should use the, the mustardy color yellow on it, on this guy. <laughs> so what are we gonna do? I think I just want to do, um, dang, I'm feeling like I want to do loyalty on this one too. So I'm going to use a mustard color and do loyalty. So remember loyalty is, is the five circles. Start with one circle in the center. The toothpicks really help. <laughs> so get yourself some toothpicks if you want to do stuff like this. It really helps. Okay, now I'm going to do, get the circle in the middle. I'm going to put the circle on the right side of the middle circle. You know, and this is something fun and relaxing that you can do with your family. You know, get some clay and you guys could just play around with it. So there's the circle on the right, your left maybe. <laughs> I'm going to put a circle on the left now for the symbol loyalty. So remember, the Adinkra symbol for loyalty is five circles. One circle in the middle, one circle on the right, one circle on the left, one circle on the bottom left, one circle on the bottom right. So we've got three circles there. So now I'm going to put one on the bottom right side. I want to make the, like I said, I want to make sure it dries really good so the paint doesn't peel off. I'm kind of using a thick application of paint as I apply it on there. That way it doesn't chip off easily. And plus, it won't chip off easily because you will be, um, you'll be putting Mod Podge on it and that'll seal in the color of it, so. Get you there. There, and then that's the sign for uh, loyalty on there. There. Okay, so what do I wanna do on the top? I wanna do a bunch of patience hearts on the top, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to make its hole right there into a heart, the hole that we're going to use to put the the wire through and to make it into a um, keychain, so it'd be a nice keychain to carry on you. Reminds you of loyalty and patience. So I'll do some other ones too. Uh, See what we, what we, what I intuit to put on the next ones. <laughs> so here we go. Got the heart right there. See that? The heart for um, patience. So it's funny how some of these symbols have changed through the years because they use the heart all the time <coughs> to symbolize love. The heart for Valentine's Day. Um, known the heart and the whatever 
anybody would think it means patience, but that makes sense. <clears throat> Sometimes it takes a lot of patience to love certain people. <laughs> so, here we go. Let me show you what it looks like now. I feel like it needs something on the legs and the arms. So what I'm gonna do is put hearts on there too for, um, for patience. I think everybody needs patience these days because we're living in a society that's moving so fast. So <clears throat> the more patience, the better. I was born with patience. I had to wait for a lot of things. So but once I got what I wanted, it was worth the wait. It was worth the effort that I took to get where I needed to go, so that's how you have to think of life, really, you know. Okay, so there's the heart on that side for patience. We'll put a heart on the other leg. <coughs> so, yeah, fun times. <laughs> Creating art in nature. I really appreciate the donor. Um, Lady Fire of Poetry for donating to my Patreon, for being a patron. I really appreciate you for doing that. And um, yeah, I words cannot express. That's why I'm glad that this is around so that I can create art and show my gratitude and appreciation for people when they help out like that. And you don't have to help out, all the, people don't have to help out monetarily for me. You can just, uh, can just refer my art to others. So I'm going to put a heart on either.